Got a windy late spring day going here, and I'm not really trying to beat the machine today. The wind is blowing, but I think it's also not throwing as fast as it was. Still, I'm pretty challenged hitting these golf ball size wiffle balls from about 20 feet away. And everything I'm doing is really intended to show how a player who's in adolescence, at least, I'm not just doing these videos for kids in Pee Wee League, I'm hoping that older kids can uh, apply some of these lessons to playing big boy baseball. And uh, I am using the metal bat now this summer. I'm actually in the process of writing a book called Tentatively Metal Ropes, and I hope that will be out by the end of the summer. But the title is kind of a shorthand way of suggesting that the objective here is to use the metal bat, aluminum alloy, and hit low line drives. Um, especially for players of shorter stature, which is what smallballsuccess.com is dedicated to. Uh, I think these lessons from yesteryear from the dead ball era are possibly the way to break into a lineup that's going to be full of big, big block, tall guys who pump the ball way up in the air and occasionally get it over the fence. Well, that's not going to be our game because we're shorter and we're going to be on base, hopefully, when they're hitting a big flies. But uh, we, at least if you're not playing pro ball or playing in some kind of summer wooden bat league, you're going to be using this. And in my previous books, I've been kind of pessimistic about being able to use dead ball methods with a metal bat. But, you know, the more I get into this, the more I find that there are little adjustments that can be made. Uh, I've already double wrapped this handle in tape, making it a little wider. Even just that eighth of an inch or whatever it is wider uh, makes me feel a lot more at home with this handle. And yeah, I'm not going to be trying to get some extra length out of it because 34 inches is as long as you're ever going to get. So I'm just going to content myself with that. So I'm down on the knob here, but I'm still spreading my hands. You know, I, from what I can tell, a 34 inch bat was what Ty Cobb used. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to take this kind of approach with a bat of this length. Anyway, let me throw a few balls in the machine there and see if I can demonstrate. I'm going to at first try to just give you some examples to look at and then explain what it is that I'm doing that's distinct to this metal bat. I'm going to set up without my front foot pointing out to the pitcher, but it's still pointing out a little bit. I got the pitch coming in a little high. I didn't mean to do that. Better concentrate. what those were running my mouth too much those were four bad swings and one good one at the end so let me just see if I can concentrate on making good contact here once again five pitches because of the wind I'm gonna get back in the plate a little bit just kind of blowing into me. Oh, that was high. <laughs> there we go. How about five more? Phew. How about six more? I'm really going to get back here because the wind is blowing these wiffle balls into me. That was straight down the line.
those are five really good swings off of six opportunities. One of those was like Mariano Rivera throwing the ball in on my hands. I just wasn't expecting to find it there when I was so far back in the play. But, okay, what was I doing there that was different from what I've showed, shown you in previous videos? We talked about the old timers having the, I call this the tobacco card stance in the 18. 80s and 90s, the tobacco products would have baseball cards in them. And you always find the strikers, the stickers of yesteryear standing with that front foot pointed out to the, to the pitcher. And if I do this kind of, what I call the speaker shuffle or the shuffle step where I bring up the back foot and relocate, I, I love that. It really gets momentum going. but. That's something that seems to be designed for a longer bat. You have more balance there. When you use this bat, your balance is always going to be somewhat closer to your body. Your center of gravity is going to be more determined by your actual physical limbs because you don't have that tightrope walker stick to help you, you know, really laterally get out there. So my hands are always a little bit closer in. And the thing about the front foot pointed out to the pitcher, I think we need to ditch that with this bat as well. Whatever those guys were doing, it ain't helping us do what we're trying to do with a metal bat. So I still like having actually both feet pointed a little bit. This is like maybe 10 degrees and this is more like 30. But these are pointed toward the plate more than toward the pitcher. I'm still standing back from the plate because I still want to uh, go up the middle and even a little bit to the opposite field. And it's certainly easier to do that if I'm back from the plate. Um, now, instead of leaning over heavily, I'm just maybe leaning over a little bit on the front foot. And then when I see that the pitcher breaks his hands and is starting home, I give a little flick of the bat like this and come back. And it's this and back that gets me up on my back foot. This doesn't have to be a, a quick, brisk movement, except that the pitcher's probably, you know, if his hands are breaking, he's coming home, so you better move fast. You could do the old Rocky Calavito thing and just point your bat, I guess, if you wanted to. And then when the, the bat comes backward, keep it close to your body now, because your center of gravity is not going to allow you to put the bat way out there like Ty Cobb. But just pull it back and shift. And you can tell that my head, in this way probably less than anyway, my head is not bob bobbing up and down. It's a real level, smooth shift. I'm still I'm curving my knee a little bit. I'm coiling it to give me a little more quickness and I'm taking the shift 100% is what I'm going for. I'm trying to shift fully to the front leg so that I can get that cut that goes straight. It's linear. It's slightly downward. Since I'm shifting my weight forward, I'm going to take it from down more to the lateral. So it's going to be slightly downward. It's going to be very level and it's going to carry a long way through the pitch and that'll make me finish like that. But I'm not really worried about the finish. Um, this is an adaptation of the Tris speaker approach. I don't know how much of that shuffle is actually is, but I just I love getting that resettling that back foot and getting that momentum, that kinetic energy flowing forward with that little shift. And uh, this is what I've just shown you is a way that I can do that very effectively using the metal bat. And I've got the hand spread and everything. I'm getting up on the front foot, doing all those things they tell you you're not supposed to do. I'm getting my front foot down late, 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 because I want my hands to follow as close as possible to the placement of the front foot. It's all going, all of my weight, my motion is going down into the ball. I don't want my foot down early because I don't want to, you know, create a loop 
that's now rolling up and back because I'm not going to swing down on the ball in a loopy fashion. I'm going to undercut the ball if I do that and I'm going to pop it up and I'm not big enough and tall enough to hope that a pop up is going to leave the yard. So you see what I, where I'm going with this? I think this is a really good strategy for smaller players who would like to hit 400. You can do it this way. Give it a try.